Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. I bought two guitars from Japan, probably at like the worst time in the world to do that, but they've been sitting for about three weeks, so I think they're safe to open now. But first, let's start with this guy. This is a guitar that somebody just messaged me and said, hey, I need some money because of the whole situation. Would you be interested in buying this guitar at all? And uh, it's not necessarily that I had a huge desire to document this model, but it's kind of a cool custom finish. So I don't know if I'll do a full review and demo simply because I just have so much that would take priority over this. But we'll at least see it in the unboxing series and I'll put it up on reverb after this. Cool, looks like he double boxed it. Well, it looks like we got a recent Lifton Custom Shop case, so that tells you it's something nice. Ah, oh, what a mess. There we go. I'm glad I have magic powers like that. So let's go ahead and see what is inside this. Once again, a bunch of latches, a regular one. Ooh, one came undone. What custom color and what model do we have? Ooh. Ah, oh, man. I wish I had more time. This is beautiful. So this is, if I remember correctly, a 57 reissue, except for instead of being a gold top, it's got a sweet like midnight blue, slightly metallic. It almost looks a little bit purple at certain angles, but I'm sure after just a nice little polish job, this thing will look awesome because right now it's got a bunch of lifting dust on it. That, that's interesting. I like how it turns slightly purple. I was not expecting that. Whoa. Now the back is just blindingly plain, but it's got some flame within it as well. That is an inter- oh. <laughs> Do you guys see the neck on this thing? You never know what to expect with mahogany necks, because sometimes they have a little bit of dancing, but this one, it's got a little bit of flame within it, but then a little bit of just like regular figuring. So I think this was a 2019 R7. So I'm definitely happy with this purchase. I don't know, I might have to take a day out just to do the review on this one because it's not every day you see a bluish purple R7 show up with a natural back. That is just beautiful, love it. But now we do have a sponsor and giveaway in today's episode. Um, did you guys know that AMS, American Musical Supply, sells printers? <laughs> oh no, just kidding. They don't sell printers. I don't know, maybe they do. Essentially, the artist relations marketing guy, you know, he doesn't necessarily have access to his warehouse like he usually did, so he took this stuff home to send to me. And this is just the box he had. So yes, this is official AMS stuff here. But again, they just want me to let you know that they are open and shipping daily. So our first thing here, it looks like we got a microphone stand. Then if I remember correctly, yeah, they sent me uh, yeah, a new microphone. Here we go. So I actually asked them for this because I've been in the market for something better than my Rode NTG2. I mean, that's a good mic and everything, but I think for voiceover work, uh, this is an Electro Voice RE20. I mean, I was looking for something around that $500 range. So this is something that'll hopefully make the rock or not segments a little bit better. But you guys don't care about that. That's just stuff for me. This is what you guys are getting. You guys are going to get the opportunity to win three different effects pedals. Because they asked me, uh, what, what do you want to give away? Do you want to give away some monitors? Do you want to do some pedals? maybe even a pedal board. And I said, hey, how about this time? Let's take a look at these. So I have never heard of this brand called Matthews Effects, but then again, ooh. You know, I like the artwork. It's like a, um, a mad scientist and they call it the chemist. I've got to say that this company knows how to do packaging because that's the key to a consumer's heart is actually, you know, do some beautiful packaging with your stuff. I mean, that's a, a pretty impressive display there. I'm not exactly sure what these things do. I guess we'll have to find out. But this guy is called the Cosmonaut and this one is the Architect. So it looks like the retail value on this, wow, 200 bucks. That is a boutique pedal right here. And this is a reverb and delay pedal. Mm -hmm. 
and the Architect V3 is a foundational overdrive and boost. <laughs> Finally, the chemist is an atomic modulator. I'm not, I'm not sure what that even means. <laughs> Looks like they have a nice little handy guide right here on the back too, if you ever get confused. So if you're interested in winning any of these, all you have to do, follow the link in the description. They have their own little page set up on AMS's website to be entered into this giveaway. So thank you AMS for sponsoring this unboxing episode. These are actually some pretty neat pedals. And now for our main feature. Ah, okay, so these were about, what, six, eight months ago. They were Japanese exclusive fenders and they were not sold to the United States. I mean, I actually have some connections within Fender now since they had sent me one guitar to review. So I at least have an in guy that I can try to get stuff like this. And unfortunately they said none of these made it to America. So I had to pay the Japan price and you know, import duties, taxes, fees and all that. But these guitars were just so cool that I needed to document these on my channel. So I hope these made it from Japan, okay? Because they only came in like Fender gig bags, I believe. And the first one we're starting here is actually not even a guitar. That's right, I bought a bass. I like doing basses occasionally. I might not be the uh, most excellent bass player. I mean, currently right now, all I have in the bass territory is that Tony Franklin fretless bass. And the whole fretless nature of that bass is really annoying me because there's this girl on YouTube, I, I forget her name right now, but she does covers of like bass pop songs, but she makes them good. Like she adds these really great fills and she does it really fantastically. So I'll put a link in the description to her channel. I like her uh, cover of, I think it's a Dua Lipa song or something like that. I don't follow modern pop unless it comes in a meme, but she kind of inspired me to pick up a bass that has frets. And speaking of modern pop, this is actually a signature bass of a, a Japanese group called Silent Siren. So let's take a look at this thing. Oh my. So here we go. It's kind of like a pastel uh, greenish mint green color and then what they've got going on for this thing is it has like this little stripe on it it continues on to the side not the back i mean as far as being a super special guitar not necessarily but they do have that lady signature back here this was a limited run in 2019, and these came out the same time that they did the reissue of the Fender Swinger model. I thought about grabbing one of those, but I decided to get these two first. So if I remember correctly, there's a bass out there already from Fender that looks like exactly the same, but it doesn't have that and it's cheaper. So it doesn't make like a lot of sense to do this, but if I'm gonna do that one, I figured, yeah, we might as well grab this one. I do have some followers in Japan, so sometimes the heart just wants what the heart wants, so. <laughs> I bought them because it literally was a quest because I have a, a few followers that I talk to that are from a bunch of different countries. I think, uh, I think it's the Philippines or something like that. I forget, but I was talking to him. It's like, do you see these anywhere? Because the only place I could find them, like they were sold out at most Japanese shops and I could only find the brokers on eBay. And at the 1600 bucks, it's like, ah, once you add all the additional fees, it's just not gonna be worth it because let's face it, I'm not in it for the long term. I just want to do the review because I think the guitar is fascinating and more people should know about it. So as long as I can get the guitar, I can review it, unbox it, have my fun with it, and then still find a loving home without, you know, having to charge an arm and a leg. That's what I'm all about. But this has to be the coolest Telecaster that Fender has ever made. And by golly, if my review doesn't get them to reissue these in the United States, I don't know what will. Because there's been a, a few signature guitars that kind of have a similar vibe, but I anticipate this video to do very, very well. 
Uh oh. It's starting to remind me of my <laughs> the glary that I broke. It's all white. Oh, here it is. We've got a little bear signature right there. Ah, oh, beautiful. This is the Silent Siren Telecaster. I, d I don't remember the name of the lady that uses this one. It doesn't seem like she uses her signature guitar as much as the bassist. But look at this. It is pure white. And what made me curious is, is it actually semi-hollow or did they just put the F hole on it, kind of like a Gretsch. I couldn't really find that information out online, so that's why I kind of bought it, because I'm sure other people are curious as well. But it's the white painted over fretboard that really sold this one to me. You've got a wide range humbucker in the bridge, so that's gonna be nice and bitey, so it's not gonna be your traditional Telecaster, but then you still have the regular Telecaster neck here. <laughs> I don't know, I thought this was just cool enough. Even if you know nothing about the band Silent Siren like me, I'll have to do some research. I think you guys can appreciate this guitar. Well, this is a tough decision for me to make. I've got a lot of things to show you that I boxed up, but I, I think I want to unbox one more. Let's go grab it. Maybe not. I, I think I'm gonna save that one for tomorrow, guys. I'll do the unboxing and review of it because that is a really special guitar, brand new from Fender. It was my understanding it wasn't supposed to come out for another uh, couple of months, so I'm gonna be, I think, the first person to make a video on that. But I'll give you a hint. It is from that new Strange series from Fender, and it's not the one that Fender already made a video on. So let's do some boxing now. We're gonna be busy packing today. That is five guitars that need to go out like within an hour. <laughs> Hopefully I get these done in time. First we need to start with the uh, the new Guitar Day projects. Uh, these were both ordered. We kind of talked about them last episode where the one actually ended up getting damaged. So we'll have to pack these guys up, send the one back and get the other one off to Alaska. Well, just in case you missed that other episode, this is a 2019 Gibson Flying V. It's the half guard. Unfortunately, we just did not have enough time to review it. And this guy here got damaged. It's the uh, Les Paul Studio Shred with the Floyd Rose. It's, I mean, pretty much the only thing you can do for that is inject a little bit of glue, clamp it. I mean, you could probably play it as is just fine, but when you're paying brand new prices, you don't have to deal with that. So we'll see another one of these very shortly, but let's go ahead and get these guys packed. Holy cow, shipping to Alaska is crazily expensive. When I ran the quote, it was 110 bucks. What was it actually once I packed up that Flying V? $260. There goes any money I made on doing that one, but oh well, it's, it's to the guy. You live and learn, I guess. But this one, man, I had to hurry up, get the review and demo done of this one to get it onto its new home. It's... <sighs> the nicest R9 you will ever see, but it does deserve to be in a nice display case that I do not currently have for it. If I had a nice place for a collection, I definitely would have kept this one because future collectible value of, you know, a 2019 NAMM show R9. Oh my. So much work, so much packing. What is next? Well, let's do this guy because we have not seen him in a long time. As you might be able to tell by our case tag, this will be the Cobra Burst Les Paul. I think I owned this one for, what was it, like six to nine months. It's kind of a niche market Les Paul custom. I think these will appreciate better in time once more people know about them. I mean, the more and more people that discover those videos, the more people that became fans of them. So this is kind of like related to the Black Widow. 
which was just a limited run for a certain dealer. I mean, I'll let you check out the review and demo to see all the nitty gritty details. But 25 of each of these things made, just like the uh, Black Widow. And what makes it super special is the fact that you have an animal decal on the back. This is definitely a collection. Once again, if I had a nice home that had a great place for displaying all my collection and stuff, I would have loved to have kept one of these, kept the Black Widow. You know, maybe in the future I'll probably regret most of these sales. But it's cool to own one of each for some time, and who knows, maybe I'll find like a centipede burst or something next. But I just absolutely adore the quilt top on this one. We got one last one. I'm ashamed to say I didn't have enough time to review this one before somebody had purchased it, but uh, don't worry. I think I'll end up buying another one of these because it is a model that does deserve to be reviewed. It's the 70s style Gibson Flying V because, you know, I will tell you that it is a good guitar. Maybe not quite as good as the original 70s ones, but I like that the neck join is the same. So I'll probably end up picking one of these up again, but for now, I, I, there's just so many things that prioritize over even this guitar. So hopefully I can get caught back up and buy another one of these because it is a pretty cool guitar. I hope you troglodytes enjoyed getting to watch this unboxing and boxing segment. Don't forget to enter the AMS giveaway and I will see you tomorrow on a very special episode. Take care.